Pakistani masters are the kings of handcrafting. Normally, a tractor lift arm requires a multi-million dollar line, but they make it easily here. Don't underestimate this small workshop. They use genuine materials, and at only 2,000 rupees, it's a bargain that includes a three-year warranty. These are the raw materials for the small workshop. First, two craftsmen must work together to place the iron block into the fiery forge. The Pakistani brothers' forge runs on heavy oil, so the craftsmen always fill it first. This heavy oil is refined from scrap tires, making it extremely cheap and saving production costs. An oil pipe connects to the drum space. Just turn the valve to ignite a raging fire that burns cleanly without any thick smoke. At over 1000 degrees, the steel is at its ideal forging temperature. Now, the craftsman uses a heavy power hammer to forge the iron into the required screw shape. For a perfect screw, a mold is essential. The next step is the die casting process. Fish I full. Next, it's fed into a stamping press that cuts away the edges, forming the screw blank. After it cools down, the next step can be performed. Drilling the head. The screw has its basic shape, but still needs more work. On one side of the ball head, the craftsman lays a smooth surface and carves a groove inside to prepare for a steel ball. Next, the screw is flipped over, and the same spherical turning is performed on the other side. Then comes the tapping process. Craftsmen mount the screw onto a machine with four cutting heads. Fed at a constant speed, the blades can now precisely cut the threads. This level of efficiency can almost match major factories. To make the ball head, he uses a different mold, stamping the red-hot iron into a sphere in one press. Efficiently trunk. Easy pass. Next, it's time to install the ball head. The worker places it into the center of the mold, then snaps the screw into place. The entire process is swift and efficient, faster than a hen laying an egg. And with that, the upper section is done. Now for the lower half. The craftsman hammers the iron block into a long strip and sends it right on. This worker's task is stamping iron blocks in the mold. This lower fixing insert is stamped into shape. Then the excess material is trimmed away. Two symmetrical mounting slots are created at both ends of the fork. A final extrusion molding then completes it. A screw still needs to go on top, but that process isn't shown. The craftsman simply welded on an old part, with the top and bottom parts made. Only the middle section is left. Again, at the forge, the craftsman stamps the iron block into shape. This process is more complex. Make a rectangle, hollow out the center, and then trim the excess from the edges. This looks like a carpenter's ink marker, but it's actually a sleeve. The craftsman drills threaded holes at both ends, first using a large twist drill bit. Since this piece is quite large, it needs cooling during drilling. The lathe is kept running after, and the cutting tool is immediately used for chamfering. Next, threads are cut inside the hole, then the screw is installed using the lathe. The Pakistani craftsman is very confident in his skills and isn't worried about it getting stuck, as he expected. Everything went smoothly. Next, the top ball head screw is also installed. This lift arm plugs in vertically, so those familiar with tractors know its purpose. Usable, but rusty. Froze paint. This isn't ordinary paint, but a powder blended from resin and pigment. We use a powder coating process. High temperature baking tightly bonds the powder to the product, creating a much more durable finish. So what do you think of this workshop's handmade lift arm? 